Permacompost in Hawaii, its production and use. Worms excel at recycling organic waste such as kitchen scraps and manures. In addition to reducing our waste stream, composting with worms is fun and produces an important plant food called vermicompost or vermicast. Here we have two samples of vermicompost. The one on the left just out of the worm bin with a high moisture content and the one on the right has been screened, dried and is ready for sale. All properly produced compost is beneficial to plants. But vermicompost is particularly useful as a plant growth enhancer because of its relatively high nitrogen content and the large percentage of nitrogen that is in plant available forms such as nitrate. It has a low CN ratio, high microbial activity, and very low phytotoxicity. Vermicompost is therefore a suitable medium for seedling production and for the production of compost tea. In producing seedlings like these Kewalo tomatoes, research at the University of Hawaii has found that a medium consisting of 100% vermicompost can produce vigorous seedlings as fast or faster than using soluble mineral fertilizers in a peat-based medium. The production of aerated compost tea uses water and air bubbles to extract nutrients and beneficial microbes from the compost. This process usually takes from 12 to 24 hours and the resulting tea is applied to plants to improve nutrition and disease resistance. Worms, they're the ones that do the dirty work. Now that we know what vermicompost is and how it can be used, it's time to learn a little about how it is produced. There are a number of species that will produce vermicompost, including blue worms, tiger worms, Alabama jumpers, and night crawlers. The first two are commonly used in Hawaii and are used at the University of Hawaii for vermicompost research. Here we see the two species of worms, the tiger worms on the left and the blue worms on the right. The different personalities of the two species is readily apparent. The blue worms are more active and this can actually be a problem because they are more prone to leave the bin for no reason. Hey, get back here. Yeah. But it can also be a good thing because if conditions become adverse within the bin, for example, if temperatures become too hot, the blue worms are better, better able to move to safety, whereas the tiger worms on the left are more susceptible to adverse conditions. Besides the worms themselves, a very important part of the vermicomposting process are the bins, which hold the worms, bedding, and food while conserving moisture and providing a dark environment for the worms. There are several types of worm bins that can be used. This commercially manufactured bin is used for larger operations and the biggest limitation for this type of bin besides the cost is the quantity of worms required to operate the bin at full capacity. These bins require seven or more pounds of worms each to operate at full capacity. Like many bins, these are constructed from plastic because plastic is a durable material that retains moisture well. These bins also have an insulated double wall to keep temperatures stable. This is a smaller commercial bin used primarily for household waste. This type of bin is stacked so that as worms finish food in the bottom tray, they move up into food at the top. Commercial bins are not the only way to go. Worm bins can be, and often are, homemade. These plastic tubs simply have holes in the bottom with a second lid underneath to act as a catch tray. This outdoor bin sits under a tree for shade and is constructed primarily of recycled plastic lumber. This is a lateral flow type of bin where new food is added next to rather than on top of old piles. This bin is made of wood the biggest disadvantage of wood as a bin material is that it eventually rots in the presence of high moisture. Wood must also be untreated if used as a bin material. Okay, once we have the bin, it's time to add the bedding. Bedding fills the bin to provide a carbon source and a living space for the worms. Bedding can consist of all types of materials including shredded newspaper, peat moss, coconut coir, and combinations of these. At the University of Hawaii, we primarily use shredded paper for bedding. Bedding can occupy as much as three quarters of the bin volume. 
Some mature compost is added to the bins to ensure a high initial microbial population because microbes play an important part in the vermicomposting process. Once the bedding has been established, worms are added. Worms generally consume between one half and one times their weight in food per day. Appropriate food for worms includes fruit and vegetables, coffee grounds, tea after brewing, rice and other grains, baked items, crushed eggshells, and composted green wastes and manures. Although worms can aid in the breakdown of almost all organic materials, there is a relatively long list of foods to use in moderation or to avoid. Large amounts of papaya seeds are thought to interfere with the reproductive cycle of worms. Large amounts of citrus peel, mango, or other acidic or pungent fruits and vegetables may also harm worms. Fresh manures and green waste may heat up and harm worms, and other materials may stink or carry pathogens. This is a virtual field day presentation produced by the College of Tropical Agriculture and Human Resources with partial funding by the USDA Sustainable Agriculture Research and Education Program.